Welcome to Politica Insight video. One of the essential questions for 2018 is one about the future of US presidency. Is Donald Trump able to survive the impact of Robert Mueller investigation into the Russian interference in 2016 elections? And will the Democratic opposition prevail in the midterm elections in November? With me to discuss that is Ambassador Gordon Gray, career mm. diplomat, now director of the Center for American Progress. Ambassador, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here. It's my first visit to Poland, and I'm very glad I have the opportunity to see your wonderful country. Thank you very much for being with us. To start, give us the impression or the sense of what is being discussed in the corridors of power in, in, in Washington. We, we've all heard the State of the Union address, mm -hmm. loud and proud as it was, but give us the, um, the sense of what is whispered. Well, there's a great deal of focus, as you can imagine, on the Mueller investigation, uh, which you alluded to in your introductory remarks. And uh, that, for inside the, the quarters of power, as you put it, I would say that's probably the, the predominant issue uh, of the moment. The question is, how far is it going to go? Um, is the president himself going to be incriminated? Are people, members of his family, close associates, now, that being said, they're close associates who have already been, um, been indicted, national security advisor, the campaign, the head of the campaign, the deputy head of the campaign, foreign policy advisor. But my guess is others will be as well. And since the inauguration, we have, seen, we have witnessed almost all the closest inner circle in, in White House being replaced, uh -huh. either sacked or left. Right. Um, what does tell, tell us about the uh, presidency of Donald Trump so far? Well, I, I th a, couple of, a couple of notable things. As you mentioned, um, there's been unprecedented, unprecedented turnover during his first year in the White House. Um, not just un unprecedented turnover, but also key vacancies in, in other cabinet agencies. Um, uh, left unfilled, for example, uh, or key members of the cabinet, the, uh, uh, who've resigned and have just been uh, replaced as um, in, in certain cases. Um, so that's one aspect. And the other aspect is really the lack of accomplishments to point to. There was a, um, um, the, the tax cuts, which reduced the uh, corporate tax cuts permanently from 35% to 20, 21% but then didn't is temporary reduction for certain people in taxes it's not very uh clear yet what the effect will be this speaker of the house uh, paul ryan just got in trouble for tweeting out uh that about a secretary who was going to learn who's going to earn a dollar and 50 cents more per week which is um, not really enough to sway, sway people. But regardless of what one thinks about the, the tax cut package, that's the only thing that, that the Republicans can really point to. So I think if I were a Republican, I'd be very disappointed in the, in the very uh, sparse legislative record. But you have, when you consider it, the Republicans control the White House, the Senate, and the, and the House of Representatives. Let us stay for a little while within the White House inner, okay. inner circle. Mm -hmm. Who is really holding power now? Who is closest to the president? If you agree with Frank Underwood that well, it's, it's location, location, location. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any, any change as far as who is uh, closest. It's um, his daughter and, and son-in-law, uh, Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. Um, the introduction with the uh, firing of the first chief of staff and bringing a uh, retired general and uh, briefly Secretary of um, Department of Homeland Security, General Kelly, a little more order has been uh, imposed as you'd expect from a retired Marine, uh, Marine Corps general. But at the end of the day, um, the president has his own um, rather chaotic management style. That was his management style when he was in private industry, in the private sector, and it's apparently his management style now. So, um, as he said on many, many occasions, there's only one person that matters, and that's me. And, and I think the chaos that we see, the lack of strategy, and the lack of accomplishment is a result of that, unfortunately. But would you agree to this theory about, you know, Apart from him being in this room, there are these adults 
like uh, Secretary Tillerson, like Secretary Mattis, like uh, Sec um, General, General Kelly, and others? Well, I think um, I think there's no question that um, Trump pays um, a great deal of um, attention to what his military leaders or mili or those with a military background have. He went, maybe it's because in, in high school he went to the New York Military Academy. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, so I don't know the reason. Um, and I think it's on the national, some of the national security issues we've seen that phenomenon that you've, um, that you've mentioned. On the um, investigation led by uh, Robert Miller, we, we, we've seen it's getting closer and closer to mm -hmm. the president himself mm -hmm. and to his closest aides from, from the campaign. Um, but I have the impression that even Trump's critics are rather cautious in discussing the what may be the final result of the investigation, mm -hmm. namely the impeachment. Yeah, I think there are a number of um, there are a couple of reasons for that. I think one reason is um, critics and, and even some supporters of, uh, of the president want to see the investigation run full course. Let us see what, the, what actually happened. There's no, um, apart from the most fervent supporters of, of, uh, of Trump, there's no one who can question the integrity um, the experience of Robert Mueller, who was appointed by, by President Bush, 43, uh, and has very distinguished career in, in law enforcement. Um, I think that's one reason. Um, tactically, there's a second reason, which is that an impeachment process requires um, a um, majority in the House of Representatives. Um, an impeachment is similar to an indictment. Uh, it's not a conviction because if there's an impeachment then the trial goes to the, the Senate where it has to be decided by uh, two-thirds of the majority. Right now the Republicans hold the majority in both houses so there is, it's highly unlikely, uh, highly, highly unlikely that the Republicans would, would vote to impeach uh, President Trump this session. Now, if the midterm elections go in favor of the Democrats, as a number of trends I'd be happy to discuss indicate that they might, um, then I think impeachment, depending on the results of the Mueller investigation, the impeachment result, the impeachment proceedings could begin in 2019. And this is exactly what I was going to ask you next. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if, if indeed in November the Democrats will win over uh, uh, the, the Congress, what would be the, the result of it, a, a part of the impeachment procedure, if, if that really mm -hmm. takes place? Well, let me separate it into, into two different, your question into two different parts. Um, I think there is a, um, a good likelihood that the Democrats would win the House of Representatives. Um, in in off-term elections such as 2018, the party in power in the White House generally suffers um, setbacks in, uh, in off-term elections. That's um, since 1970 when a president's popularity rating has been below 50%. Um, his party has lost, on average, 26, um, 26 seats. Trump's popularity rating is 39%, 40%. So it is likely to uh, switch to Democratic hand, hands. In our system, all of the members of the House of Representatives are up for election every two years. The Senate's a different matter. They serve a six-year term and only a third are up for election each, uh, each two-year cycle. In 2018, of the 34 seats are to be contested, 26 of those are held by Democrats, only eight by Republicans. So to gain control of the Senate, the Democrats would have to safeguard all their 26 seats, all those be reelected, and get two out of the eight Republican seats. That's a very tall order, which I don't think um, I don't think will happen. But again, the the um, the majority now is one. 
I would I think in in the Senate. Yes, it is now. But again, with um, the w the way the I'm talking about of the 34 seats open, the Democrats have to defend 26. The Republicans only have to defend eight. So if the Republicans win all their eight seats, then um, then they keep their majority of, of 51 to 49. Let us get out uh, 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 from Washington and, and to the worldwide uh, scene. Um, Donald Trump is said to be acting unconventionally in, in the foreign I thought relations. I was a former <laughs> diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on the other hand, y you can see that, okay, the campaign against ISIS is pretty successful. It has been all but eradicated, mm -hmm. in, in, at least in, in, the, in the strongholds. In NATO, you, you cannot see anything from what was feared in the, in the campaign. To the, to the contrast, mm -hmm. uh, NATO has been strengthened by the decisions of, of United States. And, and f for instance, this part of Europe enjoys uh, what it seems to be a strong backing of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the White House. So maybe it's not that bad at all. Well, a, a few comments. Um, the this administration cannot claim, um, really shouldn't claim the credit for defeating ISIS apart from continuing the, continuing the policy that was uh, adopted under the, uh, in the latter years of the Obama administration. You, uh, General Votel is still General Votel. Brett McGurk is still the presidential envoy f uh, for defeating ISIS. So. Um, to the extent that the administration gets credit, it gets credit for continuing a, a sound policy that was adopted. As far as um, NATO is concerned, um, I, I think that it was a serious misstep to call into question our Article 5 obligations under the treaty. Um, if I were a, a member of NATO on this side of the Atlantic, I'd still, uh, I'd still be very, uh, very concerned about, mm. about those comments because, and not just the comments as a candidate, but the co Trump's uh, refusal to, to um, reaffirm Article 5, his first trip to, to Brussels. Um, yeah. to Brussels. Um, our relationship with the UK, which for, uh, decades has enjoyed the uh, rubric of the special relationship uh, is so bad that uh, President Trump didn't go to London to open our new uh, new embassy there for fear of uh, protests. I think on our trade um, our trade policy is in shambles. His um, withdrawal from the Trans-Pacific um, um, Partnership which was uh, negotiated under the previous administration as an agreement of 12, um, and in part as part of the previous the Obama administration's uh, effort to um, check the rise of Chinese, um, Chinese power and Chinese expansion. Uh, it's going to be signed at 11 without the United States, so that certainly doesn't benefit the United States. And the renegotiation of the North America Free Trade Agreement has um, at at best um, uh, irked our 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 two neighbors, Mexico and um, and and Canada. So I, I think um, a year later we're in a worse off. The United States globally is in a worse position than it was was before. Of many things that keep world leaders awake at night, North Korea is probably the grimmest. Mm -hmm. I remember a few years back, Barack Obama was asked, Mr. President, do we have a strategy on Syria? Mm -hmm. Do you think Donald Trump has a strategy on North Korea or just your late night tweets? Um, I, don't, I don't believe he has a strategy. I think that um, the, I think that uh, General Mattis, uh, our Secretary of Defense, General um, McMaster, a National Security Advisor, and General Dunford, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, they all um, have recent combat experience in Iraq and or Afghanistan. They know the horrors of war. Um, they know, and, and General Mattis has been on the record as, as saying this publicly, um, they know there's no quick military fix. So 
uh, I think they, in, in concert with Secretary Tillerson, are wisely trying to pursue a, a diplomatic solution to a very, uh, very thorny problem. I don't see how the insults that the uh, president delights in throwing out, uh, even as, as someone as uh, despicable as Kim Jong-un, how that is part of a strategy or, or well advised at all. So he will not uh, go to war out of emotion? Um, that's certainly one's hope, but with a uh, unpredictable and, and often erratic president, that's not a guarantee any, I think any, uh, any objective analyst could, could make with certainty. Ambassador Gray, thank you very much. Thank you, it's been my pleasure. And stay tuned for more from Politica Inside Video.